up guys BD Wiz here today we're going to test out another Brazilian amplifier look at the band of audio parts Electra Bass 3k1 got this amp in from a distributor here in the US and it was fully understood that I'm gonna give you guys my opinion of the amplifier nothing held back as usual and they may actually do a giveaway on this so check the video description for any further details about that Let's get the cellophane here undone from the amplifier and check out the little manual here that's printed out on HP printer and it also comes with a sticker for your window. But here's the amplifier, yes, Banda Audio Parts, Brazilian amplifier, Electra Bass 3K. We have the clip, we have the on indicator and we also have low battery. You can see the size compared to my hand. We'll get out the tape measure, about 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters long by 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters tall and also the height is about 2.25 inches or 5.7 centimeters. Here's a comparison to some of the other Brazilian amps. Now the TAR amps here is the 1800 watt. The 3K would be about the same size as the sound digital there but as you notice the Electra here is quite a bit larger than the other 3Ks. That said, it does still use the four gauge power inputs and it's really difficult here to tell where the positive and negative are on the amp. The opposite side, you can see some adjustment controls here on either end are the speaker outs and a single RCA input. Now we'll show an overlay here of what these different adjustments are for. You can see on the left side, we have the gain adjustment. Then we have the subsonic filter. We have the low pass crossover and also the bass boost. My friends, you know, we don't use bass boost on amplifiers. Here you can see the fans, and this is active cooling. It's very nice that it has a larger heat sink, which will help for the cooling, but then it also has the active cooling fans, which come on when they're needed. Real strange here though, on the bottom is a little plate, and it has a switch inside. And no, this is not a switch for your air ride suspension. This is a crossover switch and i couldn't tell which way is off which way is on i don't know the manual shows the switch sideways i'm looking at it up and down so i have no idea here are some of the specs of the amp you can read these a little closer we're going to get into the crossover part though later because i think there's something going on with this amp or either it's not the same amp that uh it appears to be here are the ratings according to the manual i was told these may be wrong we'll get to that later so let's fire up the dyno and check this bad boy out We have the amp dyno wired up. Let's get the amplifier fired up and try it out. See how it does. First off, we're going to try 4 ohm certified 1% THD at 40 hertz since this is a bass amp. And the manual says it does a certain number of wattage, which is 1496, but I was told the manual may not be right. We got 1324, 112.4 uh, amps strong, 82% efficiency. Very good here at 4 ohms. Extremely good efficiency. So then we decided to try 2 ohms, 1% THD at 40 hertz. And the ratings we were given by Banda said 2000 watts at 12.6. So we got 2172 at 14.13. So quite a bit more voltage than they're rated, but still 224.8 amps, current drawn about 68% efficiency. It's about what we're used to seeing. So let's try it up to clipping at 40 Hertz. And I think this is where the ratings come from because they don't say at 1% THD. You see, we got 2323 at 13.97 volts pulled about 250 amps of current. That's about 66.3% efficient. Now, the manual shows these ratings, 3136 and 3750 at one ohms, depending on the input voltage. But the website, which I was told is more accurate, says 3000 watts at 12.6. So we're gonna go by, I guess, the website since that's supposed to be the correct one. So let's try one ohm. 1% THD, 40 hertz. This is a certified test. And yeah, we're getting there, cranking up. Can we make it to 3K? Ah, uh, not quite. 2710 at one ohm, 13.85 volts. 
and the current consumption was 329 amps. That's about 60% efficiency. Um, so yeah, there you go. Now, we thought maybe it's possible the manual was rated at clipping instead of at 1% THD. So you can see here at clipping, it actually does its rated power. 33.62 at one ohms, 13.67 at clipping point. And we pulled, whoa, 408.5 amps. Again, right at 60% efficient. And uh, that's kind of expected. Let's try dynamic RMS power at 40 hertz. This is like a kick drum, kicking the power to the amp, making the amp surge a little bit. Use some of those capacitors to see if they can provide some extra power. And it did, 4,055 watts at 14.36. Check out that inrush current. Them lights be dimming in Big D's labs. 500.4 amps, woo! All right, now we're gonna take the bottom plate off the amp, and I've told you guys before, get you one of these screwdrivers here off Amazon. I'm gonna leave you a link again so you can go pick one up. These screws on the bottom were extremely tight. I think they had Loctite on them, or they had Big D tight or something. Cause uh, yeah, it took me uh, uh, some extra muscle here. I had to eat some extra Wheaties to be able to get it off, but I did. You big dummy. And here you can see, check out the way the fans are laid out here on either side. You can see how uh, the heat sink is kind of uh, curved. So uh, it's got a lot of surface area here to keep the transistors nice and cool. And the layout and design, quite a bit different than some of the other Brazilian amps, just because there is more space. Uh, it does have the two transformers and the two uh, chokes there to help with the output rectifying. But nicely laid out, um, as with most of the full bridge design Brazilian amps, you know, they're just designed different than the Koreans. And here are the two. You can see the Sound Digital and the Banda. Banda looks a lot beefier, really just has a lot more space on the, the heat sink, a lot more air to help keep it cool. So let's check out the measurements here. You didn't see all of these because I didn't show you all the tests, but you can read. I don't need to read these to you because I ain't your mama and this ain't bedtime. So read the numbers. You can pause it if you need to. Go back, rewind if you miss something. That's why I put them on the screen, friends. Feel the base. Let's feel the base. That sounds pretty dang good. All right, if you guys use headphones for that last segment, you could probably tell the Infinity Subwoofer was slamming, getting some nice bass, especially at high volumes. Now let's talk about the positives and negatives from Big D's perspective. Build quality heat sink, very nice on this amp, much beefier than other Brazilians. Dual active fans help keep it cool. The bass output at high volumes was good. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the negatives. Exterior design, I really like it. Again, that's personal preference, but if I like it, you probably like it too. Not so good, no remote gain, the power ground input's too small, single RCA input. That's uh, standard with a lot of Brazilian amps, so we won't really talk about that too much. The required input voltage was high, much higher than other amps I've tested. Not really sure what's up with that. The SQ at lower volumes is not so great. But again, these are Brazilian amps. This is what they're designed for, friends. <laughs> guys there you have my test and review of the Electra 3k1 from Banda and you know what I can say is it's a Brazilian amplifier it was designed to run these you know large pro audio speakers I'm still not sure it's really cut out to do the low bass that we do here in the US but obviously a lot of people use it for that and it seems to work okay for them uh, for me for sound quality it doesn't really sound the best especially at low volumes, but man, you crank it up and she can really put out the SPL. 
So that's just my opinion. This is Big D Wiz. Until next time, you know where I am. I'm out of here. All right, so I mentioned earlier something about the crossover. You can see the website says it goes up to 500 hertz on the high end, but the manual actually says it goes up to either 21 kilohertz or 42 kilohertz. And I think I proved here that the manual was right because I was able to test at one kilohertz. All right, I'm gonna try one ohm certified one kilohertz, the Banda. Thirty-one ninety-two, thirteen point seven, three fifty-six point seven amps.